Hi guys, welcome to our first episode of Haunt Talk for the season. Um, it is 2020, so as I'm sure everyone is aware, um, things will be different this year. Um, I've been getting questions on YouTube if we are going to be doing haunt reviews. Well, obviously we are. Here's our first one. Um, <clears throat> no, we probably won't be able to go to as many this year just because a lot of them aren't open. Um, and <clears throat> just monetarily wise too, things are really crazy this year as well. So getting to as many as we get to can be difficult. So we are also going to try and do a couple other little extra haunt talk things. Um, and before we get into the review, I also want to say that we do have, um, and we're still working on more, but we have, what is it, three or four vlogs for the Haunted Adventures. I think we have three? Four. Four, four because there's two parts there's for, two parts for, for Beaver Creek, yeah. right. So that as well, and hopefully we can do one of those around this time as well. We don't necessarily have anything, well, actually we do have a place planned, I guess. Yes. Um, um, so there's also that, and it won't be in the Haunt Talk playlist, but if you like spooky stuff... You can watch us go and like vlog slash ghost hunt um, actual haunted places. Yeah. But um, as always, um, if you're a haunt owner or if there's a haunt somewhere even close to us at all, meaning like Cleveland, anywhere the Cleveland area, north um, northeastern Ohio, PA, you know Pittsburgh area, let us know where you'd like us to go. And if you're a haunt owner, you know reach out to us, tell us, hey, you're open, I'd like you to come to my place. You know, and we can get in contact that way. So the first couple of reviews we're going to have is me and Kim just got back from um, our vacation to, um, yeah, Tennessee, Gatlinburg, and Pigeon Forge. Yep. Originally, it was supposed to be Universal Studios, but they, for the most part, canceled Halloween Horror Nights, even though they're doing a couple haunted houses. So we canceled that, and we went there. And there's a couple year-round haunted houses. So the first one we're going to be reviewing today in today's video is Ripley's Haunted Adventure. All right. So... If you're familiar with Ripley's, they have a ton of different museums and stuff like that that you can yes. go to. Um, they have the Ripley's Believe It or Not. They have an aquarium down there. They have 3D theater, all this kind of stuff. Well, they also have a haunted house that's open year-round. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to check it out. Exactly. Um, and it, I think it, it had been closed down for obviously a while as well. Um, and they have, and this is also going to be a reoccurring thing this year, is it's going to be a little bit harder to grade places this year mm -hmm. just because of the trials that, um, you know, the unpleasantness or whatever, what do we call it? Cooties. That's what we Cooties. actually refer to it as. I don't know if YouTube still demonetizes you for saying what it's actually called or not, but I'm not going to. Um, I like cooties. It's a good word. Yeah. So we have to take that into consideration. Um, the facade for... Um, Ripley's Haunted Adventure is really cool. Yeah, it looks like an old like mining mm -hmm. building and stuff like that. And there was a mine cart in Correct. the front that you actually used to get to the entrance of the of the haunted house. It wasn't working. Right, which I think would be cool. Now, I had seen in other vlogs people talk about this place saying that it was shut down because of the cooties, but Apparently that's not true. We talked to the guy and it's just broke. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not non operate. It, it's just a thing that's they have to get it fixed at some point. So it's not like a thing they're doing just right now. Um, and honestly, I think that would have added something to it. I know mm -hmm. that sounds kind of silly, but like he, the guy we talked to, even said um, it added something. It made him a little bit different. You know, now you just walk up a staircase to yeah. get to the main thing. Um, so you get there. To the top of this, when you get to the top of the stairs, and it was like a, a little themed area. I think, was it like a hospital or something? Or maybe it was like just the beginning of a mansion? It was just like a mansion. Type like a thing, thing yeah. yeah. Which is kind of weird, too. There really wasn't much mine theme to it, but the whole outside of the place is made to kind of look like, like a mine. Mm -hmm. But there really wasn't much mine theming, was there? No, it was It was really your very, I, I, I hate to use this word, very generic haunted house Correct. theme. Um. Yeah, and I guess that just brings us right into sets and props. Um, generic would be definitely a word I would use. If you ask someone that's been to a haunted house in the 80s to design what they think a haunted <laughs> house should be like, I think that this is what they would make. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm old was, enough to know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or 90s even, because like they didn't used to be as elaborate as they were. And like there were some yeah. elaborate, there were some more elaborate scenes here, but there's also a lot of dark hallways interconnecting these more elaborate scenes. Mm -hmm. um, 
there was a couple cool spots. So, I mean, I'm okay with, like, old school haunts. I'm not even really necessarily saying that is a bad thing. I think that sets and props was the best thing that this place had going onto it. And not to spoil for the categories, but it, this place is more of just a walk-through. Think of, like, a walk-through or, like, drive-through christmas light place. It's more yeah. of like that with Halloween decorations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Um, and we'll get to more of why that is when we get to the actors category. Um, but, yeah. There was one notable scene where you um like walked over it was like a what kind of like a catwalk bridge over running water. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, that was neat. The bridge was cool. Neat. Um a lot of the props were like in disarray. They yeah. Were falling apart it it needs some stuff. TLC. The the entirety of the place does, yeah. Um they had a vortex tunnel that um turned on this motion activated. Almost everything was motion activated. Mm-hmm. It was very much set up. Like I'm trying to think of something like that, it, like similar to how it was set up because it would, it it reminded me of something not necessarily a haunted house how everything was motion activated kind of like an interactive museum almost yeah how you would walk up and like it would yeah kind of like, yeah yeah like an interactive, like an interactive museum. museum yeah, yeah that's so. exactly yeah everything was motion activated right. we walked up to the vortex tunnel because we had gotten pretty close to the vortex tunnel I'm like uh is it not working and as soon as we took like another step turns it on. turned on mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm just like. Well, that's weird. Okay. Um, but, but, yeah, it was... But, yeah, a lot of your typical scenes, if it's a scene that you think that might be in a haunted house, it's probably in there yeah. somewhere. Um, one of the cool things is you get on an elevator, like an actual elevator, to leave yeah. the place. And when you get to the bottom, um, the one set of doors open, the ones that would generally be behind you, and there's actually, like, um, that, like, zombie prop where they, like, come up at Yeah, the, like, that was cool gated door and it was funny because then the doors closed and then the other doors open which actually lets you leave i thought that was unique and i wasn't expecting it no i wouldn't say it startled me but i was really confused for a second i'm like uh and i'm like oh that's cool yeah yeah that was that was probably the highlight of the of the whole um haunt (laughs) was the elevator right for sure but for sets and props we gave them a seven um yeah which brings us to our next category actors so yeah (sighs) There was one guy at the beginning yep. who basically told us, like, the rules, and he was kind of in a character. He kind of had a little bit of makeup on his face. Yeah, and he was, like, in a was doctor in scrubs suit. scrubs or yeah. something. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, a doctor suit. Yes, he had scrubs <laughs> a doctor on. suit. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but other than that, that was it. There was nobody inside the haunted house. It all relied on, like, the motion-activated scare props and air cannons yeah. and things like that but there was there was nobody in there at and all. you could definitely tell that like there usually is because you could see spots where like actors were to be hiding like there's a room that was like a chainsaw thing you could see that someone's post to come out yeah. with like one of those like fake chainsaws and stuff you could tell like the drop windows and like right. a hallway and stuff like that you knew that there was probably going to be somebody there now Nothing. i imagine that's, you know, when all the, the whole pandemic thing is not going on, they probably have actors. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm assuming, I don't know if that's why, or if they mainly have actors, like, when it's a more popular season, like fall, fall. Um, you know, we went early September is when we went there. I don't know. We just put N.A. for actors because there is nothing to grade. Like, yeah. we could give it a zero, which, I mean, an N.A. is basically a zero, I guess. But, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so actors were just really not grading. Um, and we'll talk about scare factor. Again, I mean, there really wasn't actors there, so the only thing that really would scare you was air cannons. Um, if you have a kid, they might be scared of some of the scarier props. But there wasn't even that much gore that I remember in this place. Mm-hmm. No. No. So we'll make it quick. Scare factor, we gave it a two. Yeah, it's not scary at all. Um, and then... Value. So... With the Ripley's, you can do different, like, bundles and stuff like that as well. Um, Just to go to Ripley's Haunted Adventure, it's $14.99. It's about 10 minutes long. Yeah. Um, If you wanted to, you can pay, like, a bundle fee, and it's, like, buy one ticket, get two um, things free or something like that. Because, like, the one we did was what? It was, like, 40 to $45 per person. And it gave us Ripley's Believe It or Not and then our choice of any two other attractions besides the aquarium. Yeah. Um, 
so, you know, kind of you need to judge that, kind of add up things like, oh, is it worth it? Am I going to do these things? You know, is it worth it to do it? You know, mm-hmm. we're not going to be reviewing all of the other Ripley stuff. I will see Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um, it was pretty cool. A little overpriced. It was pretty cool, though. Definitely more enjoyable than the Haunted Attraction was. Um, yeah. Value, though, we gave it a five. Just very average value. Um, which I don't even think $15 is crazy expensive for a haunted house, even one that's mm-hmm. that. But it's just the fact that the quality isn't there. Right. Which is why value is a little less. Yeah. Um, and then overall, we gave it a five. It's very average to mediocre. Um, it wasn't horrible because some of the scenes were cool. It needed more cool scenes to really make it recommended since there's no actors, though. Yeah. Is the thing. Um, you are in Gatlingburg, though, so there's just copious... There's so much stuff to do. Yeah, there's so much to do, and there's so many places to get drinks. So I will say, <laughs> no, I would not say you should go into a haunted house completely drunk, but if you're slightly inebriated, your enjoyment will probably be up a little bit more. This yeah. is one of the few things we did sober. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were sober for this. Yeah, we were sober for this one. Yeah. yeah. We did the uh, earthquake a little tipsy, but... Yeah. But that does it for this episode. Um, please make sure to check out all of our other episodes. As with anything else going on this year, it's really appreciated. You know, we're still doing this and going out through all these places because people kind of want to know what it's like. Um, and there really wasn't much to touch on with this one as far as COVID protocols. Oh, I said the word. Oh, well. Um, just because there's no actors. Like, and there was, like, no one else there. So I'm sure... Um, you have to wear a mask when you're in there, but I'm sure the, ma- the actors, if there ever are any, will, and they did a big spot between us and the only other group that was there, <laughs> so, you know, they didn't really bring it up in this one because it really wasn't, yeah. it was basically just walking through and looking at some things, that's really all we did. Um, so if you want a place to feel safe, you shouldn't really feel unsafe going here because there's really no one there to get you sick, I guess. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Gets a bump the score because she's less likely of getting cooties. <laughs> less likely to get cooties because there's no one there. Right. Um, but let us also know if you've been there and you've had a really good experience. Maybe you've been there when there's a lot of actors. Let us yeah. know how that was. Um, hopefully they revamp it and they do some like because it, it does need some TLC and I think there is potential there. Yes. I didn't expect sure. it to be really long, but I think if they give it some TLC and add some things and actually have actors, I think it would be good. Especially for a year-round haunt. It's always nice when you can just go anytime. But, yep. Um, we also will be having a review up for Mysterious Mansion. That will be up as well, which is also in Gatlingburg and very close by. So make sure to watch out for that video if it's not already uploaded when you watch this. See you in the next one. Bye.